This video is a walkthrough of an activity-based costing exercise. You can find this example on pages 134 through 137 of the Management Accounting text. I have purposefully used the text example so that you can follow along as needed. Let's get started. Okay, let's do this example. Haymarket Biotech uh, produces and sells two secure communication systems, AW or Anywhere, and SZ Secure Zone. And HBT has the following operating data for the two products. Let's take a look. So the traditional volume-based costing system assigns factory overhead based on direct labor hours. And the firm has total budgeted overhead of $2 million. Since the firm budgeted 100,000 direct labor hours for the year, the overhead rate per direct labor hour is just $20. That's the $2 million divided by the $100,000. The factory overhead assigned to AW is $500,000. That's 25,000 direct labor hours times 20. In total, and $100 per unit, since the firm used 25,000 direct labor hours to manufacture 5,000 units of AW. We can see that on the previous screen. There's the 5,000 and the 25,000 of direct labor hours. So we can do the same thing with SZ. Uh, the factory overhead assigned is 1.5 million. That's 75,000 direct labor hours times $20. And that's in total. And $75 per unit since the firm used 75,000 direct labor hours to manufacture 20,000 units of SZ. And we can, again, see those numbers there's the 20,000 and the 75,000. So if we do a profit analysis uh, based on volume uh, to assign overhead, the unit selling price of AW is 400, it's uh, 200 for SZ. Direct materials and labor for AW uh, is 200, factory overhead is $100. So the cost per unit is $300, leaving a profit margin of $100. We can look at the same thing for SZ. Direct materials and labor are 80. That factory overhead is 75. We just calculated that. The cost per unit is 155 with a profit margin of 45 per unit. So, uh, however, HBT decides to go to activity-based costing. And so they identify the following activities, costs, and drivers. So one of the activities is engineering. The budgeted cost is 125000 And the activity consumption cost driver is the number of engineering hours. Setups is the next activity with a budgeted cost of 300000 And the cost driver is, the, of course, the number of setups. Machine operations is a budgeted cost of uh, $1.5 million. And the cost driver is machine hours. And then lastly, packing with a budget of cost of 75 is based on the number of packing orders. So there's the total overhead of 2 million. So here's some more data uh, that they've gathered. The number of engineering hours required for AW and SZ are 5,000 and 7,500 respectively. The number of setups are 200 and 100. The number of machine hours, 50,000 and 100,000. And then the number of packing orders is 5,000 and 10,000. Okay, so using the operating data, now we can calculate the activity rate for each activity consumption cost driver. So we take the engineering hours, recall the budgeted cost was 125,000. The activity was 12,500 for an activity consumption rate of $10 per hour. The number of setups, the budgeted cost was 300,000. Budgeted activity consumption was $300 or $1,000 per setup. The machine hours were $1.5 million. The budgeted activity consumption was $150,000, so that gives you $10 per hour. And then lastly, the packing orders were budgeted cost of $75,000. The activity consumption was $15,000, so that's $5 per order. And again, we can pull this budgeted activity consumption numbers from the previous slide. It's the total for each of these items. Okay, now that we have our activity consumption rate, guess what we can do? Some activity-based costing. 
So if we're going to apply overhead for AW at 5,000 units, then we'd simply say, okay, what is the activity consumption rate? It was $10. What is the activity consumption for AW? That's 5,000 engineering hours. So total overhead was 50,000. We can do that for the number of setups, machine hours, and the number of packing orders. And again, that's all based on the data on the previous slides. We get a total overhead cost for AW at 5,000 units of 775,000 or an overhead per unit of $155. SZ, we can follow the same thing, of course, except using SZ data. So the total overhead for engineering, 75. For setups, 100,000 machine hours is a million. The number of packing orders is 50,000. And so the total overhead assigned to SZ at 20,000 units would be 1.225 million or 61.25 per unit. So now we redo the product profitability analysis instead of using a production volume measure uh, using activity-based costing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the unit selling price for AW and SE are the same as the previous. Direct materials and labor are the same as the previous under volume product costing. But now we look at overhead and it's allocated quite differently differently, right? So engineering setups, machine running, and packing can all be assigned per unit. So we get factory overhead again of 155 for AW. So now my cost per unit is 355 and my margins are only 45. SZ, I allocate the overhead based on engineering setups, machine running, and packing. I get a total cost of 61.25 per unit. Uh, sorry, overhead per unit, and then the cost per unit is 141.25, so the profit margins are 58.75. And so why do we do all this, right? This is just a more complicated method of assigning overhead. Well, you can see the payoff comes when we compare activity-based costing to the unit overhead based on volume. And you can see that the volume-based overhead for AW was $100, and activity-based was $155. And SZ was 75 and 61.25. And so there are differences between the allocation of overhead. And in theory, you get a more accurate depiction using activity-based costing, which is why you would shift to this system. So as you can imagine, uh, the AW manager, uh, not too happy, right? But at least the uh, SZ manager is super happy because suddenly his profit margins are up by 1375 a unit. Okay, so imagine for example that the only overhead account is factory rent. Is it fair to allocate cost to products based on the volume of the products made? Or does it depend on some other type of driver? For, for example, square footage would maybe make way more sense. So if product A uses 75% of the factory and product B uses 25% of the factory, it doesn't seem fair to allocate that based on volume, unless volume matches the square footage, which would just be coincidental. So volume-based allocations are easy and work well with lots of homogeneous products that are of a similar scale. So think of it as the closer you are to process costing, the better volume-based allocations will work. And that's the idea behind activity-based costing. So find the driver of the cost and then allocate that cost using that driver. You should get a quote-unquote better result because you're simply allocating more accurately. So you might end up ba allocating rent based on square footage, electricity based on kilowatt uh, hour per product, supervisor salaries based on the number of employees, maintenance based on the tons of refuse made. And the idea is, look, a you could take ABC to its final conclusion and basically allocate every single activity that's done on the factory floor, but that's probably not reasonable. And so you don't want to go crazy. You simply want to find a reasonable number of activities on which to allocate costs and hope that you get a better answer than you would under volume-based product costing. Okay, that's it for video M5B on activity-based costing. We now move to chapter nine and cost volume profit analysis. Thanks for watching.